We're getting ready for Fan Fest. Right now we're at the train stop. Uh, we're just awaiting the train. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time at the new ballpark, walking in for the first time. We'll see what we get. We'll see how many people we can uh, interview and, uh, you know, have a good time and check out the new ballpark. So let's get it started. Just walked in, we've seen, we walked around the whole stadium, it's practically done. There's still a few parts that you see that haven't gotten done, but this place is buzzing. I've never seen this many Marlins fans, new logos all over the place. You don't see a lot of teal, which is interesting because I thought we were going to see a lot of teal. So uh, we're going to walk around, start talking to some fans and see what they think. But I mean, first impressions right now, this place is going to be hopping on opening day. During the season, it's going to be insane. So, I mean, I'm really excited, and uh, let's see what other Marlins fans think. We're here with Christian in right field. Uh, what do you think about the new ballpark? Man, I love it. It's fantastic. Is this your first time walking in? No, it's actually my second time. But uh, I've been to many, many uh, baseball parks around the U.S., and by far, this is one of the nicest for sure. I mean, it's incredible. I don't know if it's because I'm biased, because I'm a huge fan, and I've been waiting for this since God knows, I mean, 20 years almost, but this is gorgeous. I mean, and all the amenities and everything, it's just beautiful. How exciting is it to be in here with your kids? This is super, this is really a dream come true. I, uh, I actually watched the commission meeting where they voted yes for this at work with my door closed because I knew I'd be able to take them to ball games and they'd be able to grow up here in the ballpark and we've got season tickets and we're just very, very excited. I'm here with Pedro. Uh, this is your first time walking to the new stadium? Uh, yeah, first time. What do you think, just just the feeling when you walk in? Um, I, feel, I feel like it's more... Um I don't know how to explain it, like more, more closed in, because you know Sun Life Stadium was bigger, it's like a football stadium, like 67,000, I think it's that, and that seats 37,000, so I think it feels like a, like, the, like you're closer to the game, because like even like the, the farther seats, you still have a pretty good view of the game. We're here with Jonathan, uh, one of the Marlins fans, he just bought season tickets out here in the outfield, uh, what are your first impressions so far? Uh, this is great, man, I seriously, last time I remember having this feeling was when I was a little kid at Disney, so right now seeing this is extremely great. There was a lot of controversy, obviously, leading up to it, right. and uh, with the taxpayers' money and all this stuff. Right. I'm a resident of Miami. Do you think it was worth it for the taxpayers to put this together? What do you think? I think it was. I just don't like the location too much, though. I would have liked it a little bit more in uh, down Biscayne Boulevard next to the Heat Arena. Uh, but it's nice, though. And now the Dolphins are the ones that they need to get their own arena going or their own stadium. First time in a long time that you see kind of like the modern feel type thing. Absolutely. And, and they really... You know, it, it, it works here. You know, I, I don't think it would work anywhere else in, in the United States but here. And I think that's one of the most impressive things. When they first came out with the renderings and everything, it was somewhat alien because you're used to all those, you know, uh, you know, old school type of stadiums. But it, it's just, I mean, it, it's clean, it's sharp looking. I, all the amenities, I mean, all the technology that they've mentioned they were going to input into this place. Uh, it, it's gonna you see that futuristic kind of uh, architecture around. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been to Safeco in Seattle, uh -huh. and they have the roof, and they don't have air conditioning. It's just right. like a, a hangar, and when you look up, it looks different than what this looks like. This looks a lot sharper and a lot more uh, put together, so it's definitely gorgeous. Yeah, how about that big uh, screen? That's 
I mean, you well, you walk in and that thing just... That, that screen's beautiful, man. That's probably the, a that's good reason that, that Pools didn't sign, because he would have jacked something into that. Area. Well, I don't know, Stan might put a big hole right in the middle. Yeah. When that happens, we got to come back to this video, though. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I noticed that you were wearing the, the new orange uniform. What do you think of the, all these new colors? Uh, I like the, the orange as soon as it came out. As soon as I saw it, I was there. I was watching on TV, 11, 11, 11. Uh, I like the orange. I like it more than the black, actually. Oh. You know, I actually showed a picture. I think it was on Twitter. Ti was wearing like the yeah. orange hat and everything. Yeah. So it's, I it's a lot kind of celebrities wearing actually. Yeah, it's picking up yeah. like within like famous people. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought like at first people were gonna like it, but like, after a while, they start growing you because like um, you get more like more of a modern feel. You get me? It, it grows on you to the point where. You, you see why they did it. I mean, again, it's that, that you know new contemporary kind of look, that modern look, which is all about Miami, and it fits perfectly with the stadium, and I think with the people of Miami too. Have you been following all the off-season moves that they made? Yes. Yeah, what, what do you think about everything they made? Oh, it's amazing, man. I'm, I love my team, and I'm seriously so happy that they're doing all these moves. Uh, this, uh, this December, I was glued to the TV most of the time, and right now, I can't wait for the season to start. What were you thinking when all that Albert Pujols rumors were going on? I mean, obviously I was going for it and I wanted to, but at the end of the day, I think we're good with Gabby and all, we saved all that money. So uh, we're good. I mean, it was great to think about him being here, but it's all good, man. We still have the Martins. I really thought Pools was going to join, but, uh, you know, I think we got a nice rotation, not, not paying him so much money, and we can actually grow around Stanton, though, which is what matters, though. Absolutely. Listen, I've been critical of the ownership, but they really stepped up. They, they kept their promise, and it makes it more exciting to, to know that we have a team that can win and an ownership that will, that will pick up the pieces that we need to win, and, and it's great. I, I mean, we're going to have a good team. Honestly, I think we created the most buzz, like out of anybody. I, think, I don't think anybody was expecting that, because everybody thinks that we're uh, we're low on the payroll, like as far as the other teams, like the big teams. But I mean, lately I'm not gonna lie, we haven't been spending that much money on players. We haven't really been making moves. But I think we were all saving up money just for this year to make big moves and everything. I, I couldn't believe it. I hadn't experienced something like that since '97, and uh, you know it worked out then. Right. And uh, after '97, I've been a diehard fan since the beginning, through the thick and thin. And, uh, you know, to, to me, I appreciated the way we spent money wisely. So I was uncomfortable, to say the least, yeah. about, you know, how we were going about spending money. Um, but it feels good. I mean, it, it, you're, you're automatically a contender now. You're being talked about. Uh, you're getting notoriety. And, and it's something that it, it's, it's, it's new. You haven't been used to that before. But you embrace it because that's what you wanted all along, you know. Um, I hope I hope it's emphasized towards winning, but not just for one year, like how it has in the past. Like like in '97 and '03, we we won, and then we completely dismantled the team right after that, and we started rebuilding again. I hope I hope that they, they like they signed uh, Reyes for six years. I hope we keep him healthy for those six years. So I'm not saying we win six rings, but at least we win like a good amount. You get me? I'd rather I'd rather have a consistency like a consistent team than a team that wins a couple championships every like ten years. And the other thing is, I think I think we were actually gonna get Pujols. I thought we were gonna get him. But I didn't like that 10-year deal. Okay, think about it. he's he's like what, like 32? I think now 35. Would have been 42 when they ran out. I, I, most I would have signed him for was five years, most max. Absolutely, and and it's it's reassuring to know that they're still doing their due diligence and they're not just spending money for the sake of spending money. I mean, I think for the Reyes, you know, if, if, for the amount we're paying him. Uh, I'm, I'm a big stat guy. Statistically, yeah, you're taking into consideration his past history with injury and so forth. But I think for the dollar amount, it makes sense. Even if you get him for only 130, it's still at high value. And I think they, you know, did their due diligence with Cepedes. He's unproven, never played in the majors, and the few, you know, times he did face major league pitching, it's not that he blew the doors off the barn. But you know, Billy Bean in Oakland's been uh, known to do some crazy stuff, and he definitely, uh, you know, jacked up the price on that. And you know. Best of luck to him. And it also leaves some space for uh, next season, maybe, you know, go after a big pitcher, you know. Or signing Stanton long term. Or that, or that. We should do that. There you go. <laughs> you, you mentioned Reyes, and one of the most exciting things, I think, from the new uh, lineup is going to be Reyes, Bonifacio, Ramirez, and then Stanton. I mean, you're going to see a lot of runs scored just by the top of the lineup, and because of that, 
I think this is where Stanton takes off because now he's going to be able to drive those guys in 120 RBI, something like that. And Ramirez, I think, is going to bounce back. I completely agree. I think that Mike Stanton or Giancarlo, you know, he, he's, he's bound to win an MVP. Uh, the level of talent that guy has, and then now he's in a great position to really be that production guy in the middle of the lineup. I think it's going to benefit him. And I don't think that, I mean, even when we had, you know, uh, Castillo and, and uh, Renneria, I mean, Juan Pierre, I mean, in the beginning, you haven't seen three guys with that speed. You've seen two guys, but you haven't really seen, you know, three guys. So I think it's going to work out. I think it, we're going to go back to small ball uh, to a certain extent, but we definitely have those bats in the middle of the lineup between. Mike and uh, Lomo and Gabby. It'll definitely be interesting to see what happens there. One of the most known out there of the three agents, the defending National League batting champion heading into 2012, Miami Marlins shortstop Jose Reyes. Oh, I think it's going to be a top lineup, but considering the pitching in this division, it's going to be tough to you know even make the playoffs. But since I had a new wild card. Right. We'll probably get in for sure, but uh, yep. it's going to be a good season for the Martins, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they're thinking about bringing a DH to the NL. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, they're thinking about bringing that. And then also the, the new... The, Would you agree with that? Yeah, I want that really bad. I want that really bad. That and the, the new um, two wild cards in East Division. So. You think that's going to help us make it to the playoffs? I think it's going to the, I think it's make the regular season more competitive than it's been in a, in a long time because you have to win your division to get a guaranteed spot now. I just hope that they get rid of whatever that statue is in the center field because... That was going to be my next question. Well, I, I'm glad I beat you to it because, you know, that looks like a little third grader put it together, though. So we got to do something about that, put some duct tape on it or something because I really don't feel it. But what do you think about it? It's big, man. It, it's, it's, uh, it's huge. Um, you know, I... You like it? Uh, I, I don't dislike. I'm going to give it a chance because I heard it's supposed to, you know, light up and the water and water shooting everywhere. And I, I think just to give it a chance, like everything else in this stadium, and with the new rebranding and the new, you know, look of it, I think it's worth giving it a chance. Then you can ask me, you know, if it works or not. Uh, hopefully, it grows on me. That's a <laughs> it's okay, I guess. I am. We'll see. Got to see it in action. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've kept telling people on our blog. You know, in, in New York, who would have thought an apple popping out of center field is going to be cool? That's true. So, I mean, you know, this might grow on us. Yeah, who knows? It might catch on, you know. Just, it's like an original just, thing. It's a little funky, but anything's better where they were last year and the years before. So, it's definitely an upgrade, no matter what. Oh, uh, I mean, it's Miami. I mean, it's, it's different. I'll give you that. But I like it. It's Miami. It's part of our team. And I'm going to embrace it, too. I like it. A lot of people don't like it. I don't know what it is. People, people don't like things that are coming out new, but after a while, they start just going on them. I like it. As a little kid, I remember going to a ballpark with my dad, and those were like the, the best memories of my life. You can't replace them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and hopefully we'll have that too. And they're going to grow up in this ballpark. They're not going to see all the bad stuff we saw in the other ballpark. Hopefully they will forget the, the last ballpark, yes. And I hope to as well. Although there were some good memories, but the ballpark itself was no good. No. Are you going to be here opening day? Uh, hopefully, hopefully. I, I travel a lot, so, you know, if, if right now it doesn't look good, but if I can get out of work, I hope my work doesn't see this. <laughs> you know, I, I, hopefully I'll, I'll be here. I heard it's going to be great. Uh, you know, that 45-minute opening ceremony and so forth, it's part of Marlins history, and, and I, I definitely want to be part of it. Are you going to be at opening day? Definitely, yes, definitely. That's probably one of the most exciting days of our that's the history of the Marlins, more than even 93, because this is finally our home. Yes, I mean, I remember being there at 93, and just it was kind of a novelty, and it wasn't my favorite team, because, you know, I had another favorite team growing up down here. And then slowly but surely, they became my favorite team, and now it's the first game of my favorite team, and theirs too. They don't know any other teams, so it's going to be great. Are you going to be here opening day? Oh, she better believe I'm going to be opening day. All right. Are you going to be here opening day? Yes, I am. How excited are you about that? I am. I feel like a little kid going to Disney World. It's gonna be good, you know. I think it's uh, it's something to look forward to. Hopefully, the fans stick around now. You know, the stadium is smaller, so it should feel like it's more crowded. That they don't pick up their stuff and leave by the sixth inning because it's one-one, you know. So if they stick around, I think it'll be a good experience for everybody. You get rid of this green wall and a uh, homo land over there, and, and we're good. <laughs>